All right, so we are at the retopologizing stage, the less fun stage, if you will. Uh, yes, I'm bringing in the medium poly version, which I sort of exported from Unbox previously in the last video, uh, which took some time, but I got it out. And you can see what it does here. I just smoothed it, I averaged the normals out so that they are smooth. And I'm going in, I made the uh, audit live. And then I duplicate the object so that I don't have to look at that weird green wireframe I have defaults to when with its live objects. Uh, and I put the duplicated one on a reference layer so that I don't have to really select it. And anyway, I am not going to be able to select it, uh, which makes it a lot easier on the eyes, personally. Um, going into the uh, Create Polygon tool to refine some of the uh, more prominent rocks here, uh, just and then connecting it up with the Split Polygon tool. And then grabbing the edges, extruding it out, and uh, snapping them to down there, the uh, ridges and things. And uh, yeah, this is a lot of the first part is going to be like this. Uh, the nice part about retopologizing is obviously that you don't have to actually actually modify your shape too much. It does that automatically. All you have to think about is the edge flow, and the edge flow is basically non non existent in rocks. You don't really have to think think about it too much, considering yeah, I mean, it's not going to deform at all. Uh, but, I mean, uh, you want to keep your triangle count and your poly count, well, triangle count and your quad count down, uh, because, I mean, a rock, how much space will that really take in a game environment? This, however, I think could be pretty large, so I think the final poly count on this will be something like around 400 quads, which may be seen as a lot, but, I mean, it is probably going to be quite large on the screen for people, so... You know, I think it's fair enough. Uh, extruding, uh, just manipulating here. I mean, this might not seem as the most fun stage, but it is properly required. Um, you have to do this if you want a correct bake and if you want correct everything, basically. So, here yeah, I'm trying something up with a triangle there. I figured the triangle really didn't look too good, so I could just connect it out. Just adding two more quads, it's not, it's not that much. Extruding. Uh, refining shape and stuff like that. What you want to keep in mind is the silhouette, uh, which has have been said a lot. But yeah, you want to keep your silhouette in mind. You want to keep the most prominent shapes uh, in your wireframe. So you can see what I'm doing here. Uh, the rocks that are actually standing out quite a bit on the frontal part here. I'm actually modeling modeling those in so that when you look at the uh, lower poly mesh with the normal map, something is actually standing out, uh, which will give your eyes something more. To look at something more interesting, which is always good. Uh, however, I'm going to <laughs> making it this way will add a lot of polygons, and I will notice that later on. So, some parts uh, will have quite a lack of detail, but it looks pretty good actually when you're looking at the normal map mesh. So, again, making some uh, more prominent shapes there. Uh, which I mean, these in the end, I noticed that, that these really didn't add too much of a difference to the model. But I mean, if it if it's worth doing, as I said before, it's worth overdoing. So yeah, I sort of added a lot of shapes. You can see there, uh, which I just did. I skipped some shapes there with my wireframes because I really didn't think they were prompt enough to even be cared about. No one loves them. Uh, let's see here. Uh, yeah, looks pretty decent. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Yeah, again, extruding out. For whatever reason, I decided to keep that shape. Why I kept that shape, I am. I have no idea. I think I wanted the front part to actually be pretty representative of the uh, high-res mesh. I sort of wanted to keep even the size of silver change, changes. Why I have no idea. Well, I mean, it is going to be seen up close if I'm going to use this, uh, which I probably will be. Uh, although I'm not going to say, tell you how, but I probably will be in the end. Uh, merging some edges there to make it less high point. Uh, you will probably see this quite up close, that will be quite big. So, um, why not have it a decent, detailed, you know, thing to look at? Uh, you know, things like rocks, parallax mapping, uh, which you may not know what it is, it's basically a normal map, uh, sort of using a, bump, a height map. Uh, in conjunction, in conjunction with it, uh, to make it, to make your uh, normal map uh, information stand out that much more, uh, which it really does. It does a, a big difference. 
it it really benefits on rocks and sort of bricks and similar things to that walls. Um, I'm not going to use it for this model, uh, but you know if if just for you know your, your information purposes, it does help. And that rock up there is very high poly. I think yeah, most things down well. Uh, high frequency, the uh, mesh density. Uh, yeah, I'm not. I mean, what I want to do uh, with the Vita Poly tools of Maya, they are pretty limited in a way. Uh, but I mean, they're working for me, so I'm just using them. Uh, however, I would prefer it uh, if I could even get those. Uh, if you know they are next modeling tools for Maya, uh, you can search on the internet for them. Uh, great set of tools. However, uh, they are only for uh, they are platform in uh, platform dependent. Uh, basically, meaning that they only work on Windows. Shamefully enough, I don't run Windows, uh, which you may notice from the top bar of the Maya screen there. Uh, I, I do have Windows on a virtual machine which I use to run something like XNOR which I use to bake um, because I, I find Maya's bake to be very uh, non-proper I don't find it good Plain, I mean it, it is decent uh, I just I think XNOR works better for me if I want something more customized uh, I do use Maya's but otherwise I use XNOR I'm just trying to add some more uh, silver detail, which I uh, this part is probably very very unnecessary, but whatever. I, I, it looks decent in the end, and you can see I want some geometry for that end part right there, um, because after all, it is actually a pretty prominent part of the model. Um, you may not think this is that fun, but I mean it's it's not boring, you know. By all means, it's not dull. But I mean, it's decent. It needs to be done. It's sort of like UV mapping. No one tends to like it too much, but I mean, it has, it has to be done to make a model actually look properly, properly good. Uh, whatever my English completely fails. Yeah, my Swedish uh, background sort of ruined my English. Yeah, excuse the accent that I have said already. Fully can deal with it. Um, yeah. So. You know, I find myself typing English a lot better than what I speak, but I mean, I think I speak decent in English. You know, I mean, you should at least, you should at least be able to hear what I'm saying. That's you know the end, the uh, end result. If that's if if that is the end result, I'm just happy with that. Making that again the top part, which I found stood out quite a bit, so I I made it with the geometry. Uh, I mean, these parts may not think of them as that much, but. They do add in the uh, final stretch. They do add quite a bit to the model. So uh, terminating some geometry there. I mean, the good thing about making non-deform, uh, deformable, deforming uh, meshes is that is that you don't have to care about triangles. Uh, generally, with things like humans, I mean, you could have triangles, but you can't have too many, um, and you want to not sort of place them in weird places and stuff like that. You have to really think, basically, and just in these sort of uh, more rigid uh, structures, it's really, you don't have to think that much. And what I did there, you can see that, that window that popped up there, uh, what that actually was, was the custom polygon display in Maya. I turned off, uh, I turned on back face culling, which makes it so that I can select the faces which are uh, not facing me, uh, which is really helpful uh, for things like this when you have one side done and one uh, not done. So uh, you can just select one side without accidentally selecting the other. Uh, because selecting the other side constantly can get very annoying. Uh, yeah, I'm probably adding too much detail here, but I'm, I mean, who cares? It's 400 polys, I'm happy with that. 